Today I will discuss Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. But don't worry, because I've made it very easy to understand. Hi, I'm Georgiana. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the podcast. My mission is to help you improve your fluency. Before we start, get the transcript for free at speakenglishpodcast.com slash podcast. Okay, let's start. Today we'll explore the famous play Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, written over 400 years ago. This play is divided into five acts, like chapters in a book. I prepared a short summary for each act. In this episode, we'll focus on Acts 1, 2, and 3, and in our next session, we'll continue with Acts 4 and 5. In the play, Shakespeare explored important things like love, family, and problems that were important back then, and still matter to people today. Now let's start with the three acts of this classic story. Okay, picture this. We're in a lovely place called Verona, Italy. There are two big families there. The Montagues and the Capulets. And they don't get along. But guess what? A young guy named Romeo from the Montague family and a girl named Juliet from the Capulet family meet at a fancy party and fall in love, unaware of the enmity between their families. And so Act 1 ends with a big surprise. Romeo and Juliet find out who each other really is. This is a big shock, because they're from enemy families. This surprise begins a sad and complicated story with many problems that happen next. In Act 2, the story becomes more romantic. Romeo sneaks into Juliet's garden, and they talk from her balcony. They declare their love and plan a hidden wedding with the help of Juliet's nurse. Tybalt who is Juliet's cousin, challenges Romeo to a fight. This happens because Tybalt is angry with Romeo. Their clash is a significant moment in the story. As a result, the prince banishes Romeo from Verona. The act concludes with Romeo and Juliet apart encountering fresh difficulties and their secret marriage adding more complexity to their love tale. In Act 3, things get even more intense. Tybalt, who's Juliet's cousin, wants to get back at Romeo, and this leads to a big fight with Mercutio, which sadly ends Mercutio getting hurt very badly. Romeo is very sad about Mercutio and gets into a fight with Tybalt, which results in Tybalt's death. Because of this, Romeo has to leave Verona. Things are getting really tough for Romeo and Juliet because they can't be together. Meanwhile, Juliet's parents want her to marry Paris. To avoid this, Juliet asks Friar Lawrence for help. Act 3 ends with Romeo and Juliet facing many problems, and their love story gets even more complicated, hinting at more sad events to come. Great, that's it for now. Stay tuned for our next episodes, where I'll dive into Acts 4 and 5 of our Romeo and Juliet-inspired story. 
And now, let's continue with a mini story. I will tell a story by asking simple questions. I use this technique extensively in my premium courses, as it is highly effective. First, I say a phrase with information. Next, I ask some questions. After each question, there is a pause. It's your turn to answer. After each pause, I will give a correct answer. That's how I build a story. And if you want to improve your fluency much faster, check out my premium courses at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. There are several levels. Okay, let's start. In Verona, Romeo and Juliet have a big problem. They fall in love at first sight, but their families are enemies. Do Romeo and Juliet become friends in Verona? No, they don't become friends. They fall in love. Is it love at second sight for Romeo and Juliet? No, it's not love at second sight. They fall in love at first sight. Where do they meet? Verona or Venice? Verona. They meet in Verona, not in Venice. They secretly marry with Friar Lawrence's help, but then Romeo is banished from Verona. Do Romeo and Juliet announce their marriage to everyone? No. They don't announce their marriage to everyone. They marry secretly. Does Friar Lawrence advise them against getting married? No. He doesn't advise them against getting married. He helps them get married. Does Romeo Go on a vacation from Verona. No, he doesn't go on a vacation. Romeo is banished from Verona. Then Juliet fakes her death with a potion to avoid marrying another man. Does Juliet tell Romeo about her plan to fake her death? No, no. Juliet doesn't tell Romeo about her plan. Is Juliet really dead? No, she is not really dead. She is in a deep sleep caused by the potion. Does Juliet use a potion to become invisible? No, she doesn't use a potion to become invisible. She uses it to fake her death. Romeo, unaware of Juliet's plan, buys poison and kills himself at Juliet's tomb. Is Romeo aware of Juliet's plan? No, no. Romeo is unaware of her plan. 
What does Romeo buy? Perfume for Juliet? No, no. He doesn't buy perfume for Juliet. He buys poison. Does Romeo end his life? Yes, he ends his life. He drinks the poison at Juliet's tomb. When Juliet awakens, she finds Romeo dead and kills herself. When Juliet awakens, does she find Romeo sleeping? No, she doesn't find him sleeping. She finds him dead. Is Juliet happy to see Romeo? No, no, she's not happy. Why isn't Juliet happy to see him? Because he's dead. Juliet isn't happy to see Romeo because he's dead. Who does Juliet find when she wakes up? Romeo. Juliet finds Romeo when she wakes up. Does Juliet fall asleep? No, no. She doesn't fall asleep. She kills herself after seeing Romeo dead. Their tragic love brings their rival families together, and Romeo and Juliet's passing serve as a reminder of the cost of hatred. Do Romeo and Juliet's passing push the families further apart? No, no. Their passing don't push the families further apart, but bring them together. Is their story a happy reminder? No, their story is not a happy reminder. Does their story serve for anything? Yes, their story serves as a reminder of the cost of hatred. Well, this is the end of this short exercise. As you can see, answering many simple questions can improve your speaking, just like in a real-life conversation. Today, you've only seen a small example of how the question-and-answer technique works. Do you want to unlock this full potential? Get my premium courses at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. That's all for today. I'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.